After 18 years as the leader of the Diocese of Providence, Bishop Thomas Tobin is preparing for his final day, a ministry that began in 2005. The mandatory age for a bishop to submit his letter of resignation is on his 75th birthday. I sat down exclusively with Bishop Tobin inside the cathedral to talk about what he's proud of, his challenges and disappointments. I don't know exactly the timeline for that. That's the mysterious part for me. The retirement clock ticking for Bishop Thomas Tobin, who will submit his resignation to Pope Francis on Saturday. It could be accepted on the day that I turn 75 on April 1st. I promise to work hard for you and to do the very best I can. Tobin has served as Bishop of Providence since 2005. He's proud of the diocese commitment to those living on the margins with places like Emmanuel House, the emergency shelter for the homeless, which has been open now for 11 or 12 years. So that predates a lot of this homeless crisis. Our work with Keep the, Keep the Heat On campaign, it's raised over $4 million now to provide heating assistance for people. Our Gabriel's Call, the program that provides assistance for pregnant moms and new moms and newborn children, provides material and, and social assistance for them. Uh, St. Martin de Porres Center, the center here in Providence for uh, elderly people, especially in, in the uh, urban core. We've done so much in terms of doing the charitable work of the church, increasing our social outreach. I'm very grateful for that. I'm very proud of the impact our church has had in this state, in this community over the years. Keep in mind, we are the second largest provider of charitable assistance in the state after the state itself. COVID hits, you're not considered an essential worker. That bother you? Well, again, that was a technical definition that was based on, um, you know, the needs of the state and the pandemic and the restrictions and the, the state of emergency and so forth. When all is said and done, the work of the church and the work that our priests and religious and lay ministers do, it is essential. It's essential for the sake of our salvation. Closing down our churches in March of, of, of the pandemic, what, three years ago, that was a very difficult decision for me. It was painful, but we did what we did for the common good as we knew it at that time. Six years ago, you told me we probably have more churches and parishes that we need. That still hold true? Yeah, I think it is. When I came to the diocese 18 years ago, uh, we had 150 parishes. As we sit here today, we have 120. So that downsizing of churches, the changing in mass schedules, that's going to continue. Also continuing. Our priests have been wonderful in being generous in sharing their, their energy, their time, their talent in more than one um, uh, assignment. And that's going to continue going on to the future. No closings of churches this year that you know of? Um, there, right now, there's no active processes to close any churches. An alarming number, 91 priests have retired, died, or left the priesthood. Only 40 were ordained during Bishop Tobin's tenure. I think in the 18 years I've been here, there have been about 10 priests who have left the ministry permanently. That's tragic. It's very sad. There's different reasons. Sometimes there's uh, some bad behavior or relationships they get involved in or a lack of faith, their faith dies, um, some addictions, some abuses. Um, it's always sad when it happens though, and it's a source of great pain for me, for the rest of the priest, and for the parishioners as well. Bishop Tobin says he will remain in Rhode Island and will help new Bishop Richard Henning. Now, coming up tonight at 6, his thoughts on Pope Francis, the sexual abuse scandal, and his answer to the question, is everyone welcome in the Catholic Church? An exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Bishop Thomas Tobin, the bishop submitting his letter of resignation on Saturday, his 75th birthday. But then it will be up to the Pope to accept it or not. At 5, he talked about the church's work with the poor and the challenges of a priest shortage. New at 6, Pope Francis, the sexual abuse scandal, and is everyone welcomed in the church? It's time to, it's time to pass the torch. After 18 years as Bishop of Providence, Thomas Tobin is getting ready for the next chapter of his life, retirement. Tobin says his coadjutor, Bishop Richard Henning, is the right person to lead Rhode Island Catholics. So grateful, so blessed that he will be our successor here and will take over the leadership of the diocese. He's terrific.
Bishop Tobin tells me he doesn't see any church closings right now and says Catholic schools are pretty stable. Right now, as I am about to uh, leave the administration, the diocese, we are in pretty stable, pretty healthy financial uh, condition. Pope Francis celebrates his 10th anniversary. He told me once you thought he was intriguing. <laughs> is he still intriguing? He's still very intriguing. You know, he has challenged the conscience of the church and the world on some of these issues that are very important to him. Immigration, the care of the poor, uh, reaching out to those who are on the margins of society. He's sometimes been very dramatic about that and sometimes been very uh, controversial, but certainly he's challenged our consciences, all of us, members of the church, members of the community, um, leaders of nations, to do better on these important issues of humanitarian care. And I do have a great deal of, of respect and affection for Pope Francis. I think he's been a good pope. The sexual abuse scandal, a tragic period in the diocese and church. Probably haven't done enough. I'm not sure that will ever be true. The sexual abuse crisis, the scandal is a terrible, terrible chapter in the, in the history of the church. Um, and we've all suffered from it. We always think first of all of the individuals, the kids, the families who have suffered, the, the survivors, the victims of sexual abuse, it's terrible. And we know that when they are abused that way that their life can be changed forever their faith can be demolished. Bishop Tobin has been vocal on Twitter and from the pulpit on the issues of abortion and same-sex marriage and denouncing pride parades. Is there a place for everyone in the church? Yes. Everyone? Yeah. Um, everyone's welcome into the church, but on Jesus' terms and on the church's terms, not on their own individual terms. If you're going to be Catholic, you have to accept the faith of the church and the teachings of the church. You can't join a club and, and disobey all the rules. Will we ever see a female priest no. or married priest? Well, we certainly won't see female priest. I think the teachings of Christ uh, as interpreted by the church have been very clear on that. Right now in the Western church, our Roman Latin church, we don't have married priest. In history there have been. In the future, could it be? Sure, it could be. Bishop Tobin tells me he hopes to be remembered for his hard work and teaching the gospel of Christ. I, I know I look in the mirror and um, I realize that in my 75 years of life and my almost 50 years as a priest and my 30 years as a bishop and my 18 years in, in Providence, um, I certainly haven't been perfect. I've never claimed to be a uh, uh, a saint or to be a perfect moral example. Um, I know better than that. I've made mistakes, committed sins, done things wrong. Um, but you do your best despite your weaknesses and, and your sins and your imperfections, recognizing that in the end, we do our best. And it's all in, in God's hands. Bishop Tobin will celebrate his 50th year as a priest this summer. Bishop Tobin says he'll remain in Rhode Island and will help out if asked. He also plans on retiring from posting on Twitter.